All right, any, any questions? Anybody? Yes? No? Okay, moving along. <clears throat> so what we've been working on tonight is, is we're learning what T accounts are. <clears throat> and we're using those to, refl uh, to record activity in the different accounts that we use. Remember, it depends. We very much have to look and analyze the transaction, know if it's an asset or a liability or owner's equity or revenue or an expense account that we're affecting. Okay? So if I slow down for a second. Step one in what we're doing as accountants is we take a transaction and we analyze it. So the first thing you have to think about is what accounts are going to be affected by this? Okay, it's going to be cash and owner's equity. Okay. What type of accounts are those? How much is the impact, how much is the transaction that we're going to record, <clears throat> and then you apply the debit and credit rules and record it in a T account. Good? Okay. All right. We got this one, this little, little refresher for the test next week. Remember there is a test next week. Okay. What? <laughs> Don't cry. <laughs> um, before we go home, don't let me forget to talk about the online part of the exam because that will go live tomorrow morning, okay? You get a whole week to do it, but it goes live tomorrow morning on Blackboard. When's the last day to take it? Sorry. Uh, you got to be done with it by 6 p.m. next Monday night. Okay. Okay? I think I just covered it and we don't have to talk about it later. Good? <laughs> All right. So assets are? These are good things, things that you own, things that have value, uh, property, liabilities. This is where we owe somebody else money. Assets good, liabilities not so good, right? They can be good if somebody's lending you money though. Owner's equity is that calculated interest, owner's interest in the company. How much money they've invested plus cumulative earnings minus whatever money they've taken out. Okay? Let's see, we've just talked about this. Assets, property, debts, owner's interest. Good. Okay, T accounts, here we go. This is just going to be a quick refresher of what we covered earlier. Assets always increase on the left side. Left side is the debit side. Okay. Debits are always on the left. left. Credits are always on the right. right. If it's an asset account, debits are on the left. Credits are on the right. If it's a liability, assets are on the There are the debits on the Yeah, if it's a liability, <laughs> if it's a liability, debits are on the left. Credits are on the right. Always, always. That never changes. Debits are always on the left. Credits are always on the right. Okay? Got to memorize that. What does change is which side increases or decreases. So assets increase on the debit side, decrease on the credit side. We get to the other side of the equal sign. Liabilities increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. Owner's equity increases on the credit side, decreases on the debit side. Okay? All right. Here we go. Step one, when you're analyzing a transaction, look at it. Identify the accounts that are affected. Classify them. By classifying, they mean are they assets or liabilities? Okay? So you, then you can start to figure out which side of the T account you're, you're going to affect, the debit or the credit. Uh, determine the amount of increase or decrease. Apply the debit credit rules. Crazy book. Debit credit rules. And make the entry, just like we were doing on the board earlier. Good? Clear as mud? 
Okay, this is the part. I know we've had break, but you still need to nod yes or no, or I just keep repeating it. Okay. See, a little threat like that works real well. <laughs> um, okay. This is simple, but I want to I want to really drive this home because this is the real foundation of accounting that you've got to know. Debits are always on the left side of an account. Always, always, always. Credits are always on the right side of an account. Uh, double entry system is what we're doing. Double entry accounting. For every debit there must be a? Credit. For every credit there must be a? Debit. Good. Um, every transaction must have at least one debit and one credit. If you ever have an entry that just has a debit and no credit, you've got a problem, or vice versa. Okay, you will be out of balance, right? There's that phrase, you'll hear it a lot, out of balance. We got this. Debit and credit, right? Okay. Okay, this is the slide I was alluding to earlier. This is the print it out, sleep with it, Use it as your placemat under your cereal bowl, whatever you got to do, so that you stare at this enough to memorize. Assets increase on the debit side. Liabilities increase on the credit side. Owner's equity increases on the credit side. Revenue increases on the credit side. Expenses increase on the debit side. There's one that, we haven't, that I haven't shared with you yet. Part of owner's capital, you guys remember that revenue and expenses are a subset of owner's capital, right? Because they get calculated net income and it rolls up in to owner's capital through the statement of owner's equity. If the owner takes money out, it's called a draw. We all know that, but we give it its own account. So this is also part of owner's capital, but the owner's drawing account increases on the debit side. So if you stop and look, debits increase on, or there's a debit increase in one, two, three types of accounts. Assets, draw, and expense, and liabilities, owner's capital, and revenue all increase on the credit side. So there's three of each. Three types increase on the debit side, three types increase on the credit side. Okay? Different ways to try and remember it. Good. Yes? Um, when you said for every debit, there must be at least one credit? Yes. Would there be more? Yes. Okay. Remember earlier when we bought the, the equipment, $15,000? Oh. We had a debit asset. Our asset equipment increased by 15000 And we had a credit a liability increased by ten, But there was another credit to cash because cash also went down. So that was a three-legged entry. So there was one debit and two credits in that transaction. Okay? And there, be two debits and one credit. there can be two debits and one credit. There can be ten debits and ten credits. There, you know. Okay. Yeah. But there must be at least one of each. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Would I ever have an entry on the credit side of the owner's draw account? Yeah. And what would it be? The owner, if the owner puts money in, I'm going to come over and I'm going to credit owner's capital. Right. If the owner takes money out, I'm going to debit owner's draw. Right. The only time I'm going to post a credit here is when I take this balance to zero and I close it out to this and move it over here. The only time. And we'll get to that in chapter six. Okay? So not this test, the next one. So this test is one, chapter one, two, and three. One, two, and three. The next one is four, five, and six. Okay? We'll just chunk it down. Other questions? Okay. So again, this is, this is the golden slide. It's in the PowerPoint presentations on Blackboard. Okay? Okay. Here you go. We've all learned what a trial balance is, correct? That's what we just did on the board. List all of your accounts, put the balance in the debit and credit column, total it up. If it doesn't equal when you total them, 
you're out of balance and you've got to find it. Some common mistakes are you just totaled, the bal you just totaled those two columns incorrectly. So start with the document that you're on and look and see that you did your math right before you go chasing it too much further. Um, other common transactions, you'll record the debit and forget to record the credit or vice versa. So if I, if I enter a one-legged transaction, I'm automatically out of balance, right? Okay. Um, the other big one is you'll record a debit and you'll record another debit. Okay, oops, am I out of balance? Yes. And I'm off by twice the amount that I, of my mistake. Okay? Um, here's the other one, recording, an amount, uh, recording a transaction for the wrong amount. So if I have to pay my employees $3,000 and I record it as a debit to wages expense for $3,000 and a credit to cash for $300, I have a problem, don't I? Yeah, I've made that mistake. That one's fairly common. Um, the other one is the footing. When you total your account balances, you, you do the math wrong. Remember what I said about the exams? Bring a calculator. You are going to want one just because you're doing math and it takes more time to do it manually. You could do it manually. I mean, if you don't bring a calculator, you'll survive. It will take more time. Okay? Let's see. Ah, so the trial balance is a tool, remember? We use it as a tool, we prove we're in balance, then we can use that to help us create the three financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of owner's equity. Good? Okay. <coughs> What's the order we prepare them in? The income statement, statement of owner's equity, then the balance sheet. Because you need net income, from the income statement to calculate the ending owner's equity, you need ending owner's equity to make the balance sheet come out in balance with the correct amounts. Okay? Good. Oh look, here's a little visual. We kind of did this on the board though. So we calculate the income statement here for this company. They've got $27,000 in profit. Then you calculate the statement of owner's equity. You drop net income to calculate the ending balance of owner's <coughs> equity, which comes down into your balance sheet, right? We all saw that, a little refresher, um, quick and simple. All right, I'm just going to jump the words. Here's the picture. Remember I was talking about a chart of accounts? Here's all of our accounts for this particular company. Every company will be slightly different, but you've got all your assets, cash accounts, receivable supplies, equipment, liabilities, accounts payable, owner's capital, owner's draw, revenue, and expenses. And you list them in that order. You give them account numbers to go with the name because you're doing it in a computer system probably, right? In this class we're doing it on paper so that you guys see what the computer is doing behind the scenes and that you understand. But if you're using a computer system you're definitely going to be giving it a number scheme probably. The book likes to use three digit numbers. Remember that the numbering system is not set in stone. You'll see all kinds of things. You'll see four digit numbers. You'll see five digit numbers. You'll see things with locations, departments, geographic regions. You'll, I mean, you'll literally see things like uh, 079854 Okay, this is Northern Hemisphere, uh, Western Europe, uh, you know, some other designation for a, for an, yeah, Northern Hemisphere, Western Europe, automobiles, and then some sort of expense like office. And they'll break them down like that. So very large companies will have these great big uh, account numbering systems with many subcategories and things like that. Okay? Don't be scared by it. It's just the same as this with more numbers. Questions? You guys are quiet. Okay, no questions. Moving on. Um, 
there's such a thing as permanent and temporary accounts. And permanent accounts always have a balance in them. Temporary accounts, the balance gets zeroed out and the, and the balance gets taken or closed to another account. I like looking at it this way better. If I have a cash account, right? We have money in the bank. Remember earlier I said we have a $40,000 in our, in our $40,000 balance in our bank account? Let's assume it's a debit balance, a normal positive balance. At the end of the month, does the bank go through and zero out our, our account because it's the end of the month? No. It's still our money, right? If we have uh, accounts receivable for our customers, somebody owes us money, somebody owes me a thousand bucks, if we get to the end of the month, do I go in and zero it out? No, I still want the money. Those are permanent accounts. Okay? All of your balance sheet accounts are permanent accounts. The balances roll over from month to month to month and they keep going. Your revenue and expense accounts, think about what we do. On the income statement, we total revenue, we subtract expenses, we get net income. We take that to the statement of owner's equity and we add it to owner's equity, right? So these are your temporary accounts because you're taking those balances and you're moving them and adding them to owner's equity at the end of every month. Balance sheet, permanent accounts, income statement, temporary accounts. Okay? And it follows logically by what we're doing with the three income statements. Questions on that? Yes? What about something like the prepaid rent that will, I'm assuming that'll go after the six months we've prepaid? Mm -hmm. So it'll be a temporary. We'll, we'll get into that as we do chapter four and five. But if I prepay six months worth of rent, every month I use up a little piece of it, right? So every month we'll do like we did with the supplies and we'll reduce the balance until it becomes zero. So it doesn't just go away because of time, it goes away because we use it up. Okay? Other questions? Yes? No? Okay. Oh, nice. Technical difficulties are back. That's what this class is all about. Questions? No? Yes, ma'am. You, you are recording your transactions in the, what's called the general ledger and right now we're using the T account as a visual re representation of that. So every time you enter a transaction it'll go in the proper account. At the end of a month you'll total it, prepare your uh, trial balance, your financial statements. The temporary ones will get zeroed out, will get closed and the permanent ones will stay. Okay? Other questions? You can turn that off. <laughs>